All right. Well, good morning. And again, my name is Lynn Widlaski. I'm the Executive Director for the Breast Health Collaborative of Texas. We're excited to have you as a part of uh, our fourth Thursday's Lunch and Learn webinar um, called Accessing Community Health Workers, excuse me, Health Resources Using the Breast Health Portal and Project Safety Net. Um, our next webinar will be scheduled for May the 24th from 12 to 12.45, and it will be on clinical trials, Think Out of the Box, with Cassandra Harris from um, MD Anderson Cancer Center. Um, we would like to take this opportunity to thank our program committee, Julie Nangia, um, Dr. Nangia from Baylor College of Medicine, Laura Pena and Lizette Martinez from Harris County Hospital District, and Gina Lawson from the Breast and Cervical Cancer Services Program. So thank you so much for um, organizing this. We appreciate it. Um, we will start the program. If you have any questions, um, please um, you know, hold on to those questions until the end of the session. Um, if you could also mute your telephone too, we'd appreciate it. All right, I, I do want to go over our webinar objectives right at this point. The overview, it will be an overview of the Breast Health Portal and Project Safety Net, which will provide everyone the understanding of the two capabilities of both tools. It'll also give you the ability to locate breast health and primary care services for the medically underserved in your area, and it will give you the ability to locate demographic and health data for your neighborhood. Just a little bit about the Breast Health Collaborative. For those that do not know about the Collaborative, we are a nonprofit organization, and our mission is to unite breast health advocates and providers to educate, advocate, and leverage resources to improve access to care for all Texans. Um, we are a statewide network of nonprofits, for profit organizations. We currently have over 400 members um, that encompass 57 counties. Um, in Texas. Um, for those that might not be aware, one of our main um, educational programs is the Breast Health Summit. We'll be offering our eighth annual Breast Health Summit on October 25th and 26th of this year. Um, Dr. Harold Freeman is going to be one of our keynote speakers and he is a physician um, in New York City um, who is the pioneer of patient navigators. So we will be sending out more information and we hope that you can participate. A little bit about the Breast Health Portal. Um, it is on the website www.breasthealthtexas.org and it was a joint project between St. Luke's Episcopal Health Charities and the Collaborative. And it really began um, at the first Breast Health Summit in 2005. Um, it was an idea that was then launched um, in partnership in 2007, and we're uh, really excited to currently have 236 sites providing breast health services, um, be it screenings, uh, diagnostics, treatment, education, and survivorship, excuse me, survivorship support in 63 Texas counties. But we are excited to say that um, we just added American Cancer Society, which encompasses all 254 counties. Project Safety Net's history is um, uh, in a way very similar to uh, the Breast Health Portal. Um, it was developed again by St. Luke's Episcopal Health Charities. It was launched initially as a mapping tool in 2005. Um, and it was an interactive mapping with a Google platform in 2009. And it focuses on primary health care resources. Again, you know, our goal is to have all 254 counties, but right now it's 314 sites providing primary care located in 58 Texas counties. And uh, Valerie Matice, who is with the um, St. Luke's Episcopal Health Charities, um, we'll provide some information about that um, later on. Again, my name is Lynn Widlaski. Carrie Ingram is the program coordinator for the Breast Health Collaborative. Um, she's helping um, increase the access 
to the Breast Health Portal and she will be able to provide additional information um, on the Breast Health Portal right now. So I'd like to introduce Carrie Ingram. Hello, thank you Lynn. Hi everyone. All right, so um, I'm going to walk everybody through the Breast Health Portal and you can either watch what I'm doing. I'm going to share my screen so you can um, see what I'm doing. Um, whoop, there we go. All right, can you hear me now? Sorry about that. Yes, okay, sorry. Things got disconnected. Okay. So, if you were listening on the computer, you missed out. I went to breasthealthtexas.org, and I went to search for a breast health provider. So, um, right now you'll, you'll see the provider. Oh, could you mute your phone, please? Hello. Um, Hi, this is Sarah Haynes. I'm joining. Hi, Sarah. Um, we're, Hi. we're already on the Breast Health Portal, um, so if you want to go to breasthealthtexas.org, um, and then you can mute your phone, and we're going to take some questions at the end after we walk everyone through it. Okay, well, should I enter as a guest or with a, with a login? With, as a guest. Okay. Right, I don't, I don't be connect from, um, uh, I just forgot your password, login password, so I'm, I'm asking you, have you already given that to people? No, there, there's no login. Come in as a guest. Okay. Okay. Um, All right. Let me get back out of this. Bit. Okay. All right. Okay. So on the provider search, you'll see there are um, three things that you need to enter in order to find breast health um, resources. So this is a, a locator of clinics that are listed on the portal. So when Lynn was saying that we have 200 odd sites on the portal, this is what she was talking about. There are clinics, and you can find them by um, if you go to the services drop down at the top you will see all the different breast health services that you can look for. So they go from very specific, um, if you need a mammotome, for example, or um, pretty general, if you're just looking for something as basic as mammograms, um, I'm going to select mammogram screening. You can also do all services, which will pull up everybody that provides any breast health service. And that, as Lynn mentioned, that's from education to screening, which includes mammograms and clinical breast exams, um, diagnostics, including diagnostic imaging and um, biopsies, to um, breast cancer treatment, and then um, survivorship and support groups as well. But like I said, if you're following along, we can do um, uh, look for some mammograms. And then um, you can put in an address that will be close to the clinic that you, uh, I mean, I'm sorry, that will be close to the client that you're looking for, um, services for, or uh, you can just put in the zip code. But either way, you, you definitely need a zip code. But um, so I'm going to do a zip code from where we are here, 77401. And then the third thing that you need to search is the search radius. So that's how far out you want to go. So if it's someone who's walking, um, you would do five miles. But I would still recommend you go out as far as 25 miles just to make sure you catch everything. So um, once you have your services, your zip code, and your search radius selected, go ahead and press search. And you'll see it generates a list of uh, clinics that provide that specific service. And it's sorted by how close it is to the center of that zip code that you put in. And it's automatically sorted that way. If you wanted to see the, the list in a different way, there's a sort by option at the top. You can look at them alphabetically. Um, and you can still see how far it is out on the right hand side. So, um, and if you wanted to create a list, if you're a person who likes to work off a paper list, um, the idea for this is that it's a living and it's updated constantly, hopefully, by the people um, at these clinics who keep their, um, their details accurate. But if you still like to have a nice list, or if you need to send this, like a specific list to a, a patient, for example, if you uh, 
at where it says add to queue, you can have you can click off the um, clinics that you want to add to a list, and then you can either print selected or email selected, and it will just put them in a nice list for you. So you can get a nice little map as well, um, and you you can send that along or print that out for yourself. And I didn't mention that this is statewide, so I'm I'm just looking at Houston because that's where we are. But if you're out in Dallas or Beaumont, um, hopefully this will work for you as well. So. Um, back to the list of the, the clinics, um, we can look at the details. So that will, uh, that will give you more information. Right now all you see is the, the contact information and what type of clinic it is. So that's helpful if you're looking for a specific kind of patient. Um, if you know that they have a gold card in Harris County, you'll see that it says clinic type, hospital district, FQHC. You know that they can't be turned away. And, um, and you'll see how up to date the information is as well, where it says clinic last updated. But if you click on the details next to each clinic, you'll see it gives you for, it gives all that same information in addition to payment methods that are accepted, um, what languages are spoken by the staff, or if they have translation services available. Um, and then by each service, there are little plus signs, and you can click on the plus sign and see more information if there's more eligibility information or specific hours where, when it's um, offered. You can click on that and see that as well, um, and whether or not appointments are required and that kind of thing. So um, that is the um, provider search in a nutshell. That's to help you find um, nonprofit clinics. Um, um, there's one more nice little thing on here. If you're giving somebody directions while you're looking at these details, there's a, um, a map link, and it will bring you right to Google Maps, and you can give them more specific directions, for example like I'm doing right here, and it's really nice if you're talking to somebody and you can tell them, oh, you don't have to, you know, copy and paste the address into another search or anything like that to find the map. So, um, and also the other thing about these clinics, they're all nonprofit. Only nonprofits are allowed to be on the, the breast health portal right now. So, um, ideally, everybody will be offering something for somebody who doesn't have insurance or is underinsured and who is low income. Um, and it's also available in Spanish, the, this entire side of the clinic locator. So if you uh, look at the top right-hand corner of the screen, there's a little drop-down, English, Spanish. And um, you can see everything that's here in Spanish. Um, so there is the provider search. And if you have any questions, I'll answer them um, after Valerie finishes her part as well. Um, so if you're following along, um, if you want to go back to uh, breasthealthtexas.org, or you can also click on the left-hand side where it says Breast Health Portal. It'll bring you back to the uh, Breast Health Portal homepage. And I'm going to show you the mapping side of it. So if you um, do anything with health data, or if you're a grant writer, or if, you just, if you're just if you a CHW and you want to get to know your neighborhood better, um, if you'll click on Access Breast, Breast Health Portal Mapping Now, it will um, show you map. You can drag the map anywhere you want it to be. I'll look at the neighborhood we are right now, but um, you can zoom out as far as you want to on the right-hand side. Um, so I'm just going to look at the neighborhood we are right now, and you'll see on the left-hand side that there are different types of data that you can look at, and it will apply it to the map. So you can see specific to neighborhoods this kind of information, and all this information is from the U.S. Census, it's from the, cancer, the Texas Cancer Registry, and from Texas Vital Statistics. And St. Luke's is very good, and they're always trying to update the data. They just updated all the cancer incidence information. So um, if you want to kind of walk through very quickly um, an example of how you would use this, um, I'm going to click on demographics. And I want to see age 45 to 60 plus. And you'll see that it will calculate the data and then show you on the map. According, these are by census tracts how many um, individuals in these areas fall within that data range. So if you look at the population count here, and it will show you that all the red areas are from 0 to 995 individuals within this area are that age. And then when you click on each individual box, it will show you the actual count. So count, there are 884 individuals of that age in this area where we are right now. Um, if I wanted to know how many Hispanic individuals of that specific age lived in this in that neighborhood, I can select Hispanic, and it will narrow that search. Um, and you'll be able to see what selections you have on that data um, right up here. Um, and if you want to ever go back and delete something you've 
you've selected, you can press little X. But that's basic demographic information. And then um, you can also look at uh, cancer information, cancer data. So this has been recently updated to 2007. So you can see how many Hispanic individuals um, have the, the incidence rate. So here's one. I'll have to go out a little bit further to find one. But um, you'll see that the incidence, 33 within 100,000 is the, the rate of Hispanic individuals of that Oh, I don't know, the Hispanic individuals who had a breast cancer between 1995 and 2007 in this in this specific neighborhood. So you can go down and look at all the different types of information. It will show if you're not um, on the computer and you're just uh, following along the phone, you can see cancer incidence rates, um, mor uh, mortality rates, the um, number of uninsured individuals for the year 2006. Um, you can also look at poverty, um, what percentage below the federal po poverty level individuals are within an area. Um, what what the rate is of um, an, of Medicaid underserved women who have access to mammograms within an area, and then I'll show you the clinics. Um, you can actually look at all the clinics that I just showed you on the clinic locator. Are uh, you can map them out here. So if you go to clinics, drop it down, and then you select. I'm just going to look at the breast health clinics, um, and they show up as little dots all over the map. So. Um, if you were looking at a high poverty um, neighborhood, for example, you might, and you were looking to expand health services, you might be able to overlay how many clinics were in that area and then be able to prove that you need the clinic there. Um, or if you're a CHW, it's nice to know um, if the neighborhood you're working with has a high poverty rate, if it has a lot of Hispanic individuals, if it has high cancer incidence mortality, that kind of thing. So. Um, and no matter what you do, and if you're working with an, a specific area, it's, it's really nice to be able to jump on and just kind of get an idea. And so when you're looking at all these clinics, you can see when you hover over one of the, the clinics on the map and you, you click it, um, it gives you that, those clinic details. Um, so that's pretty much the mapping in a nutshell. You can also generate reports for yourself based on this data. Um, you can also see if if you've been following along and trying to use the map yourself, sometimes um, if you move the map after you've put data on it, it's really slow because it's recalculating all of that data. As every time you move the map, it's recalculating it. So I would suggest if you need to look at a specific area, you definitely go there first and then put all your data. And if you need to move, get rid of all that data, then move your map. Um, but so you can uh, generate a report if you click on a specific tracked, you can add it to a report. You'll see it's by track numbers, and um, when you hover over the numbers, they kind of highlight on the map, so you make sure you know where you are, and then you, you um, go to report, and you have to have a, um, a an account with St. Luke's to be able to use it, but it's free. It's really easy. You log in, and um, if I can remember my password, that'd be nice. Nope. But it looks similar to the report that you generated from the clinic uh, locator side, when it's, it just puts it all on one nice page and it has the map for you. Yeah. So um, that's everything that the Breast Health Portal does, basically. And I, I went through really quickly. So if you have any questions, I will answer them after uh, Valerie Matthijs, um kind of explains to you a little bit about Project Safety Net. If you've had any questions about um, what if I need a different service other than a clinical breast exam or something like that? Um, Valerie can answer your questions. So, uh, Valerie, All if you right. want to turn it over to you. Thank you. Carrie did such a fantastic job. I really don't um, have to do a lot, which is nice. Um, Project Safety Net is a little bit different than the Breast Health Portal, as she said. Um, it has more of a list of primary care services um, instead of breast health services. Um, and you can actually go to projectsafetynet.org, or you can also go to the St. Luke's Episcopal Health Charities website, slehc.org, and um, find it. Um, it has the same kind of um, abilities that the Breast Health Portal has, um, searching for a clinic as well as mapping. Um, the mapping is a little bit different. I'll talk about that in a second. Um, you also have the Spanish and English um, capabilities, and I'm going to change it back to English. 
Um, and I'll show you kind of the services are a little bit different. Um, basically, Project Safety Net was started uh, mostly to find clinic homes or help people find clinic homes for primary health services. Um, it's also really um, nice to, you know, avoid unneeded, um, unnecessary ER visits for those who are uninsured. And it's, it's nice to have um, clinic availability and clinic locations um, for those who are looking for it. It does include um, clinical breast exams and mammogram screening on the list of services. Um, so if you're looking for more than one. Um, but yeah, if you can just scroll down, you can see there's tons of things here, um, but mostly along primary care. There's also primary care on here, um, which is a very popular search. Um, again, it's exactly the same as entering an address um, or a zip code. And I will actually enter the... Um, charities zip code and the radius is a little bit different I believe you can go a little further out on the breast health portal um, but similar if you were having someone walk like she said um, you know lower um, mile radius would be probably better but I'll do 10 and um, I'm not sure if you went did you go over the advanced search okay there's also um, things like under this advanced search and I just got it from this uh, little circle or square over here um, with the plus sign County served, you can click on that, um, especially for those of you who are not in Harris County or a large um, city county more out in rural areas. Um, another thing is if you know for sure that you want only federally qualified health centers to show up, um, you could have that as well as all of these other clinics listed. And there's a language that you have to have. Um, there, you know, is something that you could click on one of these, Spanish for sure, any of these others. Um, all of these languages listed mean that one clinic somewhere in the state um, provides services within that language or um, has a translator within that language. Uh, but that doesn't mean that it's like in your area. So it's kind of a, um, a bummer, I guess, or a disadvantage, yeah, that, that it doesn't tell you exactly where that clinic is within the state. You kind of have to scroll around. However, if you... Um, Search by a larger radius. I'm assuming by a few different zip codes within the state, you'd probably be able to find it. Um, similar with payment method, if you if you knew what kind of payment method you were looking for, and walk-ins accepted or referrals required are also um, you can search by that. And again, it's very similar to what the Breast Health Portal um, clinic list looks like. You can do the same thing by emailing or printing them. You can um, search or sort by a different um, sort method, things like that. It's all exactly the same even when I click on them um, that Carrie showed us. And then also the mapping um, is a little bit different. It, you can do census tract or zip codes. And I'm actually going to click on census tract. Um, and it's all the same. However, there's a little bit of difference in the information that is um, available. So the breast health portal was more um, breast cancer incidents, breast cancer mortality, things like that. Um, the census tract for the Project Safety Net is more uninsured, live births, mortality rates, and medically underserved areas. And then if you actually go by zip code, it, that's when you show more of like the preventable ER visits, uninsured ER visits, and things like that. So um, it's a little bit different, but very similar in the way that it works, um, especially if you're looking for um, a primary care service or a clinic that's within the area. Also, as Carrie mentioned, um, it's not only helpful for patient navigators and patients who are looking for services, but also those who are starting to um, plan to build or start a clinic. It really shows the statistics on a neighborhood or something like that um, and where maybe the highest need for a clinic could be. I also want to point out really quick that you can overlay boundaries um, over top of the data if you're looking more. Some people aren't super familiar with census tracts. And um, that's just the way that data um, that we gather is um, organized. And so sometimes it's nice to put boundaries over top of the data, such as um, school districts or even super neighborhoods are really popular um, to search by. And so that's another nice tool for this. Again, you can overlay the clinics. You can generate reports. And it's all very similar to um, what Carrie said, but I don't want to keep blabbing. I'd rather have you um, ask questions. So I'm going to give it back to Carrie since she knows how to run this computer. <laughs> and um, yeah, we'll be happy to answer any questions that you have. All right. All right. Does anybody have any questions kind of messing around on it? Um, did you come across anything? 
Um, I see Dale Eastman that you asked if it's just for Houston. No, it's not. Project Safety Net is also statewide. And, um, and I don't know if I was clear on this. All of the, the clinics that are listed, if a, for example, a primary care clinic also offered clinical breast exams and you did a search for that on the breast health portal, you would pull up You'd, also, you'd pull up that clinic as well. So they're, they're connected and it, kind of vice versa. If you're looking for something on Project Safety Net that offer just primary care, you could pull up someone that also offers breast health services. So um, any questions? I'd like to just kind of add in here too. Um, we've been able to use this mapping capability. We had an Avon intervention project where we wanted to find African-American women um, uh, we were, we were focused on reducing the no-show rate for African-American women, so we at, were, used the mapping capability to find neighborhoods that primarily had African-American women in the Houston area. So it, it was a, a great resource for us to find those resources. Um, during the Hurricane Ike, um, you know, when there was a lot of people calling in to um, find services, it, it's just a great way to quickly find using a zip code um, resources in the community. Uh, I don't know if Carrie will probably mention too that we always are looking for new sites and if you would like to be on the site, um, membership is very easy and Carrie can tell you how to do that too. Right, okay, and I see Amy's question. Um, if you're not on the computer, Amy Deutsch asked if, but I mentioned having to be a member of St. Luke's to use the Breast Health Portal. Actually, that's only to um, create a report and you don't actually have to be a member of St. Luke's. That's, uh, you can, um, if you go back to that report, try to pull that report and it will ask you for a, a, a login. All it is is creating a free account to log in and access the report. It's to be able to kind of track what, how people are using the mapping, but also in, sometime in the future, hopefully, you'll be able to log back 